Hi guys, this occurring challenge is called balance brackets. I'm going to read the beginning of the instructions and then I'm going to show you some examples in notepads. When I'm done, I'm going to walk you through my code line by line and then we are going to run it to confirm that the solution works. Here they say a bracket is considered to be any one of the following characters. Then they have parentheses, curly braces, and square brackets. They continue, two brackets are considered to be a matched pair if an opening bracket occurs to the left of a closing bracket of the exact same type. Our input for this coding challenge is going to consist of a single string. So this string is going to contain characters with the characters representing the brackets. Before I proceed, I need to specify that in our solution, we will need to output a string to confirm whether the brackets were balanced or not. So if they were balanced, we will return yes, otherwise we return no. So here's an example of what our strings are going to look like. So this string here has six characters and every character is a bracket, some sort of brackets. So we're going to use a stack data structure to verify if these brackets are balanced. So here are some rules. First of all, whenever we encounter an opening bracket in our string, we're going to push it on the stack. So for example, if we encounter this, as we iterate through our string, I'm going to push this character on my stack. The second rule says I'm not supposed to add a closing bracket to an empty stack because then that will be invalid. Think of it the HTML way. In HTML, you use opening tags and closing tags, but you cannot create an element with a closing tag. You need the opening tag. So here, if I have a closing bracket and my stack is empty because it does not have an opening bracket, then it's invalid. And therefore I quickly know that there is no balance. Rule number three, if a closing bracket is encountered, I need to remove the last item on my stack. In other words, the latest item on my stack, or you can also think about it as the last brackets that I added. So let me clarify. If I am here, for instance, I've just added this parenthesis. When I encounter this closing parenthesis, I'm not going to add this closing parenthesis to my stack. I'm simply going to remove this opening one because it's now closed. So whenever I have a closing bracket, if it matches the last opening bracket, I can remove the last opening bracket from my stack because now it's closed. And one other important rule is that the stack must be empty after processing all the brackets. So when I'm done looping through my string and processing my brackets, I am not supposed to have any opening brackets. If there are opening brackets, it means there is no closing and therefore I know that there is no balance. So now I'm going to simulate how this loop would run. First on my stack, I would push this first character, which is this opening square bracket. Then at the second iteration, we're going to be here, which is an opening curly brace. So I'm going to add this to my stack. Then I'm going to reach this parenthesis. It's an opening bracket. So I'm going to add it to my stack as well. And when I meet this, I know that this closing parenthesis is closing this opening parenthesis. So I pop this off my stack because now it's closed. So I'm done dealing with that pair. Now at the next iteration, I'm going to be here. This is a closing curly brace and it corresponds to that opening curly brace. So I pop this off my stack as well. And then finally, I'm here with that closing square brackets and this corresponds to that opening square bracket. So I also pop this off my stack. Now I'm done dealing with my string here with all the characters and my stack is empty. So there was a balance and therefore I would simply return yes. Now, what happens if the first character in our string is a closing bracket? So let's say I receive something like this. This is a closing bracket and is the first bracket in my string here. According to my second rule here, I'm not supposed to add a closing bracket to an empty stack. So once I see this as the first character or the first bracket, I quickly know that I have no balance. So I will return no. Now, what if I have this at the end? I have some opening brackets, then at the first iteration, I will have this, then this and this, like I explained, then I meet my closing parentheses. So I pop this off the stack. I meet this closing in bracket here. So I remove that and I meet this closing square bracket. So I also pop that off my stack Then I meet this. So I'm going to add this to my stack because it's an opening bracket. I meet this one here and I'm also going to add it to my stack, but then I'm done. So what happens here? Is it balanced or not balanced? According to my rule number four here, the stack is supposed to be empty after processing all the brackets. So if I'm done processing my string here and I still have this on my stack, then I know that there is no balance. And therefore I also return no. There is one scenario that we've not talked about. And that is if we have non-matching closing brackets. 
So for instance, here we have opening, opening, and opening again, and then we have three closing brackets. So in terms of the nature of the brackets, these are matching. But in terms of the types, there is an error. If you can't spot it, then this is the error right here. Because we have an opening parenthesis, we are supposed to have a closing parenthesis after that, or another opening bracket, whatever that is. But here we have a closing bracket, and it does not match this parenthesis because this is a square bracket. So here in this string, there is no balance because this here is not valid. So we will also return no, but we need some sort of mechanism to spot such errors. For this coding challenge, I'm going to use the ASCII table. So I'm going to rely on the decimal representation of these characters. And you've seen me use the decimal ASCII representation of characters in previous videos. But if you've not, then I recommend that you go through my channel and watch my previous string related coding challenges and you will see what I mean. I'm still going to give you guys a walkthrough here. So this is w3schools.com and I'm going to zoom in through this page. And now I'm going to scroll down to the references for parentheses. Have a look at the second cell here. It reads the decimal number 40. So 40 here is the decimal representation for an opening parenthesis or a left parenthesis. 41 is a decimal representation in ASCII for a closing parenthesis or a right parenthesis. So that is what you can see here. Here we have a left square bracket or an opening bracket. The decimal representation for that is 91. And here we have a closing square bracket or a right square bracket. And the decimal representation for that is 93. Now we are on this row right here, 123. That is a decimal representation for a left curly brace or an opening curly brace. And 125 is the ASCII decimal representation for a right curly brace or a closing curly brace. In case you've not noticed, there is a pattern here. Between an opening bracket of any type and its corresponding closing brackets, the maximum difference in decimal value is two. And I'm talking again about the decimal ASCII representation. Between 123 and 125 here, the difference is two. Between 91 here for this opening square brackets and 93 for this closing square brackets, the difference is two. And if I go to the top here, the difference between 40 and 41 for the parentheses is only one. So in our logic, we can say, if we compare the decimal representation of our characters or our brackets, and the difference is greater than two, then we know that we're not dealing with matching brackets. So if I jump here, this here and this, if you compare them and you get the absolute difference between the two of them, between their decimal representations, the difference is going to be greater than two. So we know that these are not matching brackets and therefore we will also return no, because they're not balanced. So once we reach here, we know that we don't even need to process these other two characters. We can simply return no. Now that we've designed our solution, let's go ahead and look at the code. So this is what I've written. The function signature is already given. So we have this string type. We need to return the string, which is yes or no. The name of that function is is balanced. And the parameter here is the string s. So that could be a string of characters, just like I've shown you here. We need to create our stack data structure. So here I have this stack of characters. That's why you have char here as the argument. And this stack of characters is called brackets. Now we need to loop through the characters in our string. So I have this for loop here. So I'm saying for every character C inside of my string S, I am verifying if I'm dealing with an opening bracket. If I am, then I'm going to push that bracket on the stack. Otherwise, if this evaluates to false, it means I'm dealing with a closing bracket. So I'm going to enter my S statement right here. And I'm going to verify if my bracket is empty, but I'm dealing with a closing bracket it means it's not balanced because I'm not supposed to add a closing bracket on top of an empty stack. Otherwise, we can perform our comparison using the ASCII table. So we need to compare the decimal representation of our characters. If you're wondering why I'm performing this subtraction here, you need to keep in mind one thing. Our stack is only ever going to contain opening brackets because like I explained, whenever we are dealing with a valid closing tag, we are going to pop off our opening tags. So when we reach here, we remove this one and here, we remove that one. So our stack only keeps opening brackets. If I get the absolute difference between the last opening brackets that I just added on my stack and the current character that I'm dealing with, which by now we already know is a closing bracket. So if that absolute difference is greater than two, then I can return no, because I know that the brackets do not correspond and therefore there is no balance. Otherwise, if none of these two conditions evaluated to true, I can simply act normally and remove the last opening brackets that I just added. By the time I'm done processing my string of brackets, my stack is supposed to be empty. So if it's empty, then I can return yes, there was a balance. 
Otherwise, I can return no because this means that my stack is still having some opening tags. So let's run this code now. We've passed all the sample test cases. Let's submit this code. And we've passed all the test cases. So that's it for this stack coding challenge on HackerRank. I hope you liked my solution. If you did, please make sure you subscribe to my channel, turn on your notifications, and I will catch you next time.